Robin. Welcome to Axel's Garage. We're down here in Axel's shop today, and we're going to be playing with some sights and some sight upgrades for a Glock pistol. I'm going to use my Glock 19 now. We got all this stuff during the virus because we spent a lot of time in the house and away from people. Um, bought a couple of new pistols. We got some, some gadgets that we bought during that time frame, and then things started to go back to normal and we never really got around to some of these projects that we started during the virus so back here today I am going to um, take some True Glow TFX Pro these are the sights that I picked out for my Glock 19 alright um, they seem to get decent reviews and they were reasonably priced that's why I went with these I'll link them in the description and I have the slide off of my Glock 19, relatively new pistol. Um, it's probably got about 500 rounds through, never been cleaned, so got the factory goo on the inside. And I have my Vism sight pusher that I've never used. And I have my little uh, my little tool here. You know, any tool you need to punch, and you need a 316 thin wall nut driver um, to get that front sight off. And that's really all, all you need. Hopefully, I don't know. I'm new at this never done it before so figure I'll take you along and we'll see how easy it is or isn't um, you know people on YouTube and online and in the forums and other videos you watch made it look real easy is it that easy I don't know I never did it before I'm a handy guy I'm good with tools I'm good with minor you know gunsmithing stuff but nothing major so let's see here how easy it really is so I'm gonna start with the front sight removal and I'm gonna bring you in close and show you what we got alright so with the slide here you can see there is a a little small 3 16 nut it's very shallow and it's very close to the front of the slide and that's why you need that thin wall uh, driver so a regular 3 16 nut driver is not gonna work I'm hoping See if I can get this out of here. Oh, there it goes. Got a button on it. This is a uh, Vism. Um, I don't know if it's a Glock tool. It might be. It, uh, it's got the the thing on it here. It's got the nut driver. It's supposed to be magnetic. This button opens the nut driver. It's got a uh, punch in it that you can use for the for the Glocks, and then it's got a a magazine um, base plate removal tool as well. And it almost looks like you could double it as a church key. I'm not sure on that. So we'll get this nut driver out, and hopefully this will take this nut off without any issue. Now it is a polymer screw that goes into the polymer or plastic. Um, sight. If you're removing aftermarket sights, you might have a different setup. But these are factory sights. There's a the little screw. I think the screw is polymer. Let's see. No, it's magnetic. So the screw is metal. The sight is polymer. Alright, and the sight is not stuck in there, but it's in its oval, and you just take the punch, and you should be able to punch it right out. There is your your sight. Okay. And there is your little tiny factory screw. And what I'm gonna do is take the factory screw and I am going to Screw it back into the site, just like that, so that they stay together. And I'll bag that up, and I'm gonna—I save my old stuff, I would guess. You could throw it out, do whatever you want to do to it, but I'm gonna look to save it. So now we got the front sight out. We could work on the rear sight, or we could install the front sight. It really doesn't matter one way or the other. I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is just finish up on the front side so opening up my package here these are the the sights that I picked they fit 
you know, 17, 19, 26, 27, 34, they're pretty much all the similar um, original style framed, framed blocks. All right, get the plastic packaging out of the way. All right, so these are tritium and fiber optic. They come with a little um, Allen key installation tips. There is a screw that says used with Gen 4 Glocks only. All right, a decal and just an informational um, packet aside from that. So we'll put that to the side and I'll look through the little installation tips. Holy cow, could they have done it any smaller? Um, I might need a magnifying glass for this. Okay, after reviewing the very small written installation instructions your rear sight has a set screw in it and that's what your allen key is for so you're going to make sure your set screw is not protruding across the bottom of the sight all right and you can put that to the side because we're working on the front one first all right the front sight all right comes with a screw installed and this screw is um, longer than the one that says use with Gen 4 Glocks only. So we're going to take this screw and we're going to unscrew it and we're going to use the Gen 4 screw for our, our application because that's what we're putting on a Gen 4 Glock 19. So here's our longer screw and they are both really short. It's only like a, it's .100 of an inch long is the screw that I just took off and well, according to the directions and it's point zero eight zero of an inch long for this guy right here so these are real small screws I have fat fingers so I mean that could be a a factor in what we're doing here so they're saying take this site and set it firmly into place mine just pretty much falls right in um, there's almost no left to right movement on it because it is an oval in the top of the slide itself so that sort of will center that sight and now we need to put that screw in so I'm gonna flip this over and let the weight of the slide hold the front sight in place just like that let me turn it around to give you a better a view um, hopefully that helps a little bit so I have my screw hole opening and I have my shorter um, screw that they said to use like I said the difference in the two screws is I mean minuscule you could barely see it by eye and then they're saying to use a uh, blue thread locker um, they actually they actually put on here a thread locker uh, blue example to use a thread locker example blue Loctite 243 or 242 so what do I have here I have medium strength Permatex thread locker it's not giving me you know a number I guess if you use Loctite brand um, 242 or 243 would be the number this is just a medium strength Permatex uh, blue which is really all that you need and let me get a little a little piece of paper so I could try to limit my mess alright so there's my ah, I forgot that was in there alright so there's the site sitting in there I got my Screw, I'll put it in my magnetic holder here. It is tiny. That's the one thing that I'm 
I'm realizing is how tiny it actually is. Then I'm going to undo this blue Loctite, try not to make a mess, and I'm going to put a drop of blue Loctite, which pretty much one drop is covering every thread on it and now I should be able to and yes I can because it's magnetic right, try to find the hole Now, they're saying to tighten it to 10 inch-pounds or 1 newton meter. Alright, I don't know what 10 inch-pounds, 10 inch-pounds is, is, is not tight at all. Um, I'm just going to take it, I'm going to snug it. I think that sight looks straight here. It kind of looks a little off. So I'm going to loosen it just a hair and see if there's any wiggle room for it. So I loosened it just a hair. And there is a little bit of wiggle room. Alright, so there is some wiggle room in the sight itself. So I'm going to, I straightened it out. Now I'm going to keep a thumb on it appears to still be straight get it on there put a thumb on it again that's still straight I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to get on there nice and give it my final final little jerk. And that looks straight. I do have some thread locker on the edge. put one drop in it and it leaked out I'm cleaning some off with a little lint free towel that I use and I'm going to grab a toothpick that I have in my gun cleaning kit to use that as the point and this is just to get the thread locker off So that thread locker is off the slide. The sight is centered. It looks perfectly centered. And I'm just going to take this on this side and clean the thread locker off of the head of the screw. Take a little, little Q-tip maybe because if the thread locker dries all over the head of the screw it'll be that much more difficult to remove it if I ever need to remove it because it's going to make the the wrench not fit on the the screw completely you know perfectly because of the dried thread locker around the outside of the, the screw head that's just me like I said never done this before but you would think that with such little and tight clearances dried thread locker around the screw could really potentially be a problem so I cleaned off the inside of that let me clean off the inside of my tool as well for the same reason okay I think we got this uh, I think we got this looking pretty good. 
and we can move on to the back side. All right, I'm trying to get you in here as close as I can. Let me see if I can get in a better spot. Well, it looks about as close as I can get you and still see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the slide and you're going to slide it in. You can see this this tool comes with various little polymer inserts that go on either side of these blocks. The, they come with angle ones and, you know, for different shaped slides. But because, you know, the blocky Glock side, you just need the straight ones. So you're going to slide the slide in this way. This bottom piece will spin up and down to adjust the height of the slide. So if you hold the, the slide in just like that, you can adjust up and down and you can see it's bringing the slide up what you need to do is bring the slide up as high as you can without these jaws touching the top of the slide so you gotta make sure that you have a little bit of light in between and I think that's about as high as I can go now you can tighten down one side or the other to hold the slide in place Okay, so now my slide is locked in and flat, and now this top one is a pad that will go on the top of the slide as well to hold the slide secure. So you could, if you want, you can loosen this just a touch, see how it moved, and then tighten this down. It pushed the slide back down a little bit. So you got this top one tight now, and now I'm going to turn the side one and now that slide is tight and now okay I have interference right here so I'm gonna need to loosen just a hair loosen this one a hair hold that slide back down and turn this one in to get this to go in just a little bit more now I'll tighten that top one I'll tighten this one everything's tight again now I have a little bit more room to turn this where it's not hitting so now I'm gonna keep turning this one here and this block is gonna move in theory and push that slide out this side really not putting hardly any pressure on the On the screw mechanism at all it's pretty easy and just to show you um, there's a little card insert that came with one of my small parts that I bought so I have just about a, a card business card this is about business card thick so a business card fits in a double business card is really really tight to get in that's how much clearance I have above the slide to this pusher block like I said I'm not pushing this hard at all um, but once I got to about this point it's even easier you know real easy where I'm just twirling it Alright, once you go all the way over, that slight sight just fell out. And there it is, laying on that other block. So now what I could do is, I'm going to loosen this one. I'm going to loosen this one. I'm going to leave this one where it is. And I'm going to pull the slide out. And you can see right there, there's my dovetail or whatever they call it. And I'll push my factory sight out and there's my factory plastic sight and I'm gonna hold on to that as well just in case I ever want to go back to a factory sight all right so getting ready for the back sight I'm just gonna take a little nylon uh, parts brush or a toothbrush these are those cheapos you get in the Harbor Freight brush kits just make sure I got nothing in the grooves there so that that's clean and then I'm going to take my new sight 
make sure that that set screw right there is below which it looks like it is but I'm just going to give it a little turn just to make sure I'll give it you know a turn or two I'm not going to take it all the way out just yet because I don't want to lose it and I'm going to just with my hand slide it in until it stops all right, and you can see it went not halfway but it went in enough and it stopped so now I can take my my tool and I could move it back over Right, I want to get this in there just as I had it before so I'm going to keep that fairly snug bring this down make sure I got everything nice and snug that's in there, that's in there. Slide is nice and tight. Alright, I'm still, I didn't change the setting of the height, so I'm still good right here. About a business card above it. And now I should be able to push this slide, which it's going in. A little tighter than the old one came out, but nothing crazy. All right, now, this is the question here is, how far do you go? And pretty much you want to try to get it centered on the slide. So you can do that by eye. You can keep taking it out and putting it in and measuring it with a micrometer. Um, there's several you know, different ways you can measure it with a micrometer or you can just eyeball it and most people that have a, a decent mechanical eye can eyeball it and if you get your head down right even with it you can really get a good view when you're eyeballing it whether you're whether you're on or not you could take a a straight edge and put it on the back plate right where the, the back plate meets the the metal part of the slide and just like that I'm using the instruction book as a back plate and see where it hits the site to see whether you follow one way or the other way but if you if you get down if you get down right in front of it and put your head in front of it which I hope I'm not blocking you when I'm doing it you can get real close so I think I'm real close here so all right, being I think I'm real close, I am going to loosen this side. And I'm going to loosen the top. Which you need to now bring up a lot higher because this side is a little bit higher. So in order to get the slide out, and then you can come and look at the slide. And you can check your gaps. And this actually looks pretty close to centered all right if I get a micrometer in check we could really see how close my eye is if anything I think I'm 
favoring that side like I would in, in just a hair too much. Yep. Went in just a hair too much. So before I check it with a micrometer, it's almost like a challenge. I'm going to slide it in. I'm going to put this guy down. And I am going to just move it just a smidge. I think I'm real close. Let me get the micrometer out and we'll take a look and see. But I think I'm real close. All right, so I got my slide sitting up there. I got a set of uh, cheapo Harbor Freight digital calipers. Let's see, they're on. They're zeroed. Okay, and I am going to... Now, how do you measure this? If you have a good set of calipers that has one of those end things, you can do it that way. These are cheap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, I think... The easiest way to do it is going to be to go from that side to the corner here. So I guess like that. So I'll measure like that. See what I got. 22.5 millimeters. And then I'll close it up a little bit. Go from that side. twenty two point three millimeters so I'm point two millimeters off that's pretty damn good so if I go here twenty two point three and then if I flip it over and go here twenty two five that's pretty damn close to being centered as far as I'm concerned. Any way you want to measure it, you could put a straight edge on here and grab the straight edge. Like I said, if you got one of those end ones where you could measure from here to there, that'll work too. But however you can measure the distance, you could get it real close. I'm very close. I'm happy with it. It looks decent. It looks straight. The uh, top one, you could, you could see that by eye when it's off very easily. But if you wanted to measure that one, as well you can take your calipers let me zero them again take your calipers and you could go from the side of the slide 17 16 7 if I go on this side That, this is a little harder to do. So at the front, 15.2 there. And at the front, 15.2 there. It's like 0.2 of a millimeter difference on that also, which is probably within the margin of error of this cheapo Harbor Freight um, measuring uh, digital calipers that I have there. So, got them good. Last thing is that set screw. All right, so bringing the camera back on the bench, I'm going to take the provided Allen key out. And take that set screw out. There's the set screw there. You can see it against the, the card. And I am going to put it down. I'm going to take my Loctite. And I'm going to put one drop. And we remember before how much one drop actually got everywhere so I'm gonna let it drip off like I just did onto there and I'm gonna just take my set screw 
and turn it in and just give it a little oomph down and I'm not going to touch anything because I'll just make a mess with that Loctite I'm just going to, well maybe I'll, I can't just leave it alone I'm going to stick my going to stick my q-tip in there like that to suck up that excess oh that looks much better all right cool all right I gotta say that wasn't too bad for the first time um went together pretty easy slide look looks excellent uh, these are the tritium plus fiber optic sights they are the true glow tfx pro i'm going to go to the range in a couple of hours and try them out see how i like them um we can probably do some some low light and some some lit up range time um just to get an idea of of how they look and how they shoot and you could see if now if you know that you shot pretty pretty dead on um, you know supported and rested say across the bench at the range and now you're consistently going a little left or a little right you know that you may need to make a little adjustment on this backslide and that's just loosening the set screw just a little and just pushing it you know a little bit one way or the other but some trial and error um, could possibly uh, be a factor when I go and, and, and shoot with this I like them they're a metal sight rather than a polymer sight, and they should be uh, easy to, to recognize real quickly And when you bring it up. It was kind of an easy thing. I, I, I hesitated doing this because I was a little apprehensive about pushing the sight out and getting the screw in with the little baby screw with the Loctite. But all in all, it actually went pretty easy. Even doing it on video for the first time, it, it wasn't a, a ton. I know I was thinking through the process, but uh, the process did go fairly fairly easy I'm gonna save my old stuff and I'm gonna save this little extra screw that we wound up getting and the Allen key as well for the set screw there that's it today from Axel's garage down in Axel's shop I hope you enjoyed the video leave me uh, what you think in the comments below do you afraid to do it do you want to do it have you done it and that's it thanks for watching